Hey sunshine! In today's video, I'll be setting up my brand new bullet journal for 2020. Holy crow, that sounds so weird to say. Okay, so this is my new bujo for this year. I went with the Archer and Olive black hardcover dock red notebook. It has 160 pages and 160 GSM paper, which was one of the selling points for me. Having such thick paper really reduces the ghosting, which is when you can see the pen through the back of the page. Not only that, but I'm hoping to learn to watercolor this year, and this paper will allow me to use more mediums like watercolors in my bullet journal. This notebook also has lay flat pages, two ribbons for place markers, and a pocket on the inside back cover. I love the little ampersand logo at the end of this ribbon. So popping back to my 2019 Bujo for a second, you can see here that I used some of the last pages of the book to brainstorm out some ideas on how I wanted to set up my new Bujo. I played with spread layouts as well as tested out what color scheme and fonts I wanted to use. Another reason I chose to go with Archer and Olive this year is that it has very white paper instead of that yellowish tint that most other notebooks seem to have. My Scribbles That Matter notebook has whiter pages than the moleskin I had used the year before, but nothing beats the crisp white look of the Archer and Olive. One con to this book might be that the pages aren't numbered, but I, like I explained in my flip through video, I don't really use an index, so I don't need them. If I did need them though, I could always add them in myself. I do have a 2019 setup video from last year as well, which I can link in the corner if you're looking for even more inspiration when this video is done. And if you're here because you're totally new to bullet journaling, I actually have a whole playlist on the basics of bullet journaling, which is a great way to get started without all the extra artsy stuff. So with all that being said, let's jump into the actual setup. I started first by setting up my key. For my key, I use squares to indicate tasks and then fill them in with color or with arrows to indicate if a task is completed, migrated, or scheduled. A canceled task simply gets crossed out. Then I use a little gift icon for birthdays, a triangle for YouTube, a circle for an event, an asterisk to denote an important task, and a dot for notes. I decided to switch between two main fonts for the headers in this setup. I wanted something easy to do, but that would still look finished and cute. So to make this font, I just used the brush end of my Tombow marker to create broad strokes for all the downstrokes of the letters, and then used the pen tip to draw in the rest of the lines. After that, I outline each letter in pen, erase the pencil, and then use a darker gray Tombow marker to messily shade the top and bottom of each letter. For this title in particular, I did also add a simple line drop shadow along the right side of each letter. For the cover page, I knew I wanted the year to be centered in the middle of the page, but I wasn't sure yet what design I wanted to make, so I moved right ahead to the next spread. So the next two spreads will be my future log. I started by dividing my pages into thirds to fit six months on each spread, and then I just drew a circle header and a calendar in each section. Right here, I'm just checking for ghosting of the black pen I was using, but as you can see, absolutely nothing shows through this paper. It's awesome. So I don't normally use a ruler in my bullet journal because I'm kind of fond of that hand-drawn look, but I think I was just being extra fussy because it was a new book. If you ever want to get a nice straight line without using a ruler, just lock your wrist in place and swing your arm from your elbow and move along the dots. It's never perfect, but it's usually good enough for rock and roll, and means you can make new spreads on the fly without needing to carry a ruler around with you. Another lazy person tip for you is instead of counting boxes on each page, I just folded it up to see where I drew the lines on the previous page and made a dot where they lined up. Then I drew my lines with that dot as my guide. So pay close attention to the next part. This is the exact moment in time where I completely forgot that July existed. In my panic, I decided to see if an eraser would take up the still wet gel pen ink and lo and behold, it didn't do a bad job. So I did my best to clear the pen I'd messed up and then wrote back on top with the correct months. I'm almost glad I made this mistake right up front. It sort of took the pressure off of the rest of the setup. I often get anxious about making mistakes in a new book because it's so fresh and clean, but now that I had already messed it up and managed to mostly fix it, I calmed down a little bit. The next spread is one I love to include at the front of all my bullet journals. It's the annual tarot reading I do for myself every Samhain or Halloween. I draw a tarot card for every month of the year starting from November all the way back around to the next October, and then one extra card as the clarifier for the year. I like to keep the results written down like this so that I can refer back to it as each month begins and hopefully gain a little perspective on what I should be focusing on that month.
The next page will be my goals, divided up into categories of dark sunlight, art, health, and money. The page after that will be for this year's version of the story I'll write for myself this year page. It's a place where I'll sort of write from the perspective of future me looking back at the year and reflecting on the things I've theoretically accomplished this year. This next spread will be used for tracking my growth on YouTube and Instagram throughout the year. The left-hand side is where I'll write the number of subscribers and followers I have at the end of each month, and the bubbles on the right will get colored in as I hit big milestones, like 1,000 subs on YouTube, for example. The monetization tracker on the right hasn't changed from the way I had it set up in my last journal. I'm just not coloring anything in yet until this year is totally done, in case I can fill it in more before the year closes out. The next pages are incredibly simple. It's just two brain dump pages for YouTube ideas and Instagram ideas. It's a spot where I can brainstorm different themes, doodles, layouts, etc., in the hopes of lessening the amount of loose papers on my desk. This next spread is going to be health-based. The left-hand page will be an overall health tracker for me to keep track of things like doctor and dentist appointments, my period, PMS symptoms, when I'm sick. And the right-hand page will be a list of my favorite foods, just so that when me and my partner are sitting around in the perpetual, I don't know, what do you want for dinner loop? I can refer to this page and see if there's anything that jumps out at us.
The next spread is just a place for me to keep track of any gift ideas I have throughout the year so I can have a stock of ideas before birthdays or holidays come up. And then the other side will be a visual wish list of things I'd like to save up for. Next up is one of my favorite spreads. It's a place to keep track of any shows, movies, books, or music I want to check out, either because I heard about them and they sound cool, or because a friend recommended it to me. This last page I'm going to set up before I jump back to that empty cover page is this grid spacing guide. I first saw this created by Amanda Rach Lee and have since seen a lot of other people recreate it and I think it's an incredibly useful spread to include in a bullet journal, especially because there's absolutely no indications of the center of the pages in the Archer and Olive journal like the Scribbles That Matter journal had. So I think I'll be referring back to this a lot when I set up new spreads. to that grid spacing guide, I just wanted to include a cute inspirational quote. So I went with, wake up beauty, it's time to beast. And seeing as I'm a Disney nerd, I thought it was quite fitting. This quote page will be available for free for all my patrons as a phone wallpaper, a desktop wallpaper, and as a bullet journal printable, along with the rest of the pages of this setup. Before we move on, I just want to thank my awesome patrons. It's because of you that I can keep doing what I love. So if you're interested in grabbing those wallpapers or printable pages of my 2020 setup, just head over to my Patreon and check out the Pothos tier. For just $4 a month, you get access to everything in the lower tier, as well as all the printables I make for my videos. You can print them out and put them in a binder or cut them and paste them right into your own bullet journal. I'll leave the link in the description below. All right, lastly, I flipped back to the front to tackle that cover page. I had aspirations of doing some beautiful floral illustration, but then I got the idea to use my tattoo as inspiration for the design. So I basically did a simplified version of my newest tattoo as the cover.
All right, it's time for that final flip through of my 2020 bullet journal setup. I went back and added a few more details and also filled a few things in so that you can see how it'll look when the pages are actually in use. I personally love how this turned out and I hope you also enjoyed this video and got some inspiration from it. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, click subscribe and ring the bell to get notifications every time I post a new video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Until next time.